So some important things here. First of all, you need to know what exponential form means. So that means you want to write everything with exponents instead of radicals. Right now, this is in radical form. And because we can change radicals to exponents, and we can change exponents to radicals, we can change which form we want this to look like. So the cube root of 2b cubed, well, 2b cubed is inside the cube root. And what can we change a cube root to? The power of 1 third. Now this unit really stresses that you understand all of your exponent laws from grade 9. Yes? We're going to do that after. We're going to simplify it further. Okay? So, and that's what I was saying, like, when I have something like 2x cubed, if we think, what is the definition of an exponent? 2x cubed is 2x times 2x times 2x, right? So you get 2 cubed and x cubed. In other words, this 3 goes to the x and also goes to the 2. It's like distributing, but you have to be careful because some of you sometimes like to do that when there's a plus sign in between. But if I have 2 plus x cubed, I am not allowed to put the 3. This bad. It'll go away. Bad stuff goes away, right? So it's actually equal to 2 plus x, 2 plus x, 2 plus x. Whoa. And then if you actually had to multiply that out, you'd have to distribute and use FOIL for the first two. And then either use the chart or FOIL for the next one. Pomoimo, there it is. Whatever we made up. Okay? So you really have to know your exponent rules really well because when you get into situations where it's a fraction, this is like this situation in the green on the right. You can put the one-third to the two and the one-third to the b cubed. Well, what happens when I multiply 3 times a third? It just becomes b to the 1. So this is our final answer that is simplified. If you can do that all in your head, that's fine. Thank you. I'll give you another one. And I discovered something in the other class this morning, is that sometimes when people are writing down their own notes, they decide not to write down the words, they just write down the numbers. But the words are the key thing to tell you when you're studying what you're actually doing in the question. And that's what you really need to study, is what, does the, what do the words mean? Because there's lots of different questions that start with the same numbers, right? If I said simplify, that would mean write this as a mixed radical. If I say convert to exponential form, that means something else. So you really need to know what the instructions are. So this next one, we're going to do one more. Convert to exponential form and simplify. Let's do the fourth root of 16, x to the 9, y to the 20. It looks scary. It is Halloween almost, so I'll try to make more scary examples. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm, if this one here? That's looking for 2 and a third is the same as the cube root of 2. It's looking for what number multiplied by itself three times. No. Yeah, we're look it'll be one point something. So first of all, Yeah, and you can leave it as an improper fraction. So the one quarter would go to each of them. Can you see that you would get 
16 to the 1 quarter. X to the 9 quarters, because when you multiply 9 times a quarter, you get 9 quarters. And 20 over 4 as well. Can you simplify any of those? 16 to the 1 quarter is? No. 2, right? Because 16 to the 1 quarter is the 4 through to 16, is their number. That times by itself, 4 times, makes 16. Yes, 2. So you have to always be looking at your numbers and ask yourself, is that one of the ones that I could simplify? 16 to a quarter, that's the 4 through to 16. Yes, that's equal to 2. So 16 to the 1 quarter is 2. I can't simplify the 9 over 4, but the 20 over 4 just becomes a 5. And this is exponential form and simplify. Okay, Catherine, what did I do with which 4? Well, 20 divided by 4 is 5. Abby. This is the final simplified answer. Doesn't look simple to you? In this one, that's all you can do. What's that? Nine times one quarter is not simplified because you could, fraction times a fraction, multiply it out to be nine quarters. You want another one? Do you want a, a same level or a level up? Okay. Right. Okay, I'll make I'll make a question that's I'll make two questions that are the same level and then one question that's a level up. And I can do that all by making one question. Okay? So write in exponential form and Simplify the fifth root of nine. Oh, I don't want nine. I want an even nicer number. Okay, fifth root. Fifth root of no twenty-seven x to the nine y to the four times by the cube root of 9, oh, I like this, x to the 2 thirds, y to the 8. Okay, so if you can simplify the first one all by itself, that's question one. If you can simplify the second one all by itself, that's question two. If you can then simplify it by multiplying those together, that's question three, but it's all one question. So write in exponential form and simplify. Okay. So the fifth root is a power one-fifth cube root would be the power one-third. So I can just rewrite these things. I know that some of you are starting to skip steps, which is okay, as long as you don't skip too many and not get any answer right. That one-fifth will go to each thing. First one was pretty good. The second one involved an additional fraction, nine to one-third, x to the 2 thirds to the 1 third, multiply those together, you get 2 ninths. Because 2 thirds times 1 third is 2 ninths. And then you still have y to the 8 thirds. Good. So this is part 1 and part 2, changing each of those to fractional exponents. Now, is there anything we can simplify? Yes.
Not quite. Six thirds is two. It's okay. Do you notice that we're multiplying here? Do you notice that these are the same base? What is your exponent rule when you multiply the same base? What happens? What? If we are multiplying with the same base, what can you do to the exponents? Add them. So I'm going to put my numbers at the beginning, 27 to the 1 -fifth times 9 to the 1 -third. These are not the same base, are they? No. So I can't do anything. But x to the 9 fifths plus 2 ninths, I could add those. 9 fifths plus 2 ninths. And y to the 4 fifths and 8 thirds. And the exponents become a grade 7 question. Just adding fractions. So, 27 and 9 are going to stay the same for now. I'm going to have some fun with them in a bit. OK, but we need to add these exponents. So I'm going to keep the 27 the 1 fifth and the 9 to the 1 third. And I'm going to get x to the, well, how do I add fractions? Need a common denominator. So this will be 81 over 45 plus 10 over 45. Why? And here it will be 12 over 15 plus uh, 40, right? 40 over 15. Now that I have a common denominator, 27 to the 1 fifth times 9 to the 1 third, x to the 91 over 45. So you get to use your adding fraction skills. When did you first learn to add fractions? Is that grade 7 or is it grade 8 now? So there it is, simplified. If you wanted to be really fancy in this one, I'm going to say that you can write the beginning as 3 to a power. You just have to tell me what goes there. No. How would I how would I go about it? Could I change twenty seven to a power of three? What is twenty seven equal to? It's not twenty seven is not equal to three. Three times nine, but that's not a power of three. Three to the close, you're close. Three cubed. Three to this is this is three to a third. This is three cubed. Oh, I meant that's what I meant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing. Okay. No, I, what I'm saying is we have to be careful when we say things what they actually mean, right? And I knew that that's what you meant. So three cubed is that is twenty seven. What can we do for nine? Three to the power of five is not nine. Oh, we're doing three to the power of five. I'm replacing this nine. What would go here? Three to the power of two. So then, now I can use some more exponent laws. I have three to the three fifths times three to the two. Oops, this should be a third, right? Sorry, little typo there. 3 to the 2 thirds. You asked for a hard question. Now these are the same bases, right? Yes. Well, let's, let's just finish this up and then we can go back to your questions. This. 
Just, we'll write it all down, and then we'll look back. Okay. Now, when we look back at this question in its entirety, yes, there is, there is nothing in this question that is beyond the grade 10 course level. In fact, most of the stuff where you guys are getting stuck on is because there's fractions. Fraction stuff is grade 7 or grade 8, depending on which one place you see it. You're expected to know that. Just because a question has fractions, doesn't mean that it should be any harder or outside the realm of what you can do. Yes, it takes longer. Yes, it looks scarier. Okay? But you have the skills to be able to do this. This last part where I changed it to threes is not, a, is not something where that would be on a test. On the test, they would probably already have the bases the same. But it is something that so it's one of those things where it wouldn't be taught in grade 10 or tested on grade 10, but by the time you get to university, you'd be just expected to know that even though it wouldn't ever be officially taught or tested. So it's not bad for you to see it. I will roll up and we'll look at some stuff in this question. The reason it took a long time is because of the fractions. And fraction work is from grade 8. You should be able to add fractions. Exponent work is from grade 9. You should be able to know your exponent laws. The only thing that's new, if we look through this, step 1 to step 2, this is new. This is new for grade 10. And I want to point this out because when we look through this question, even though it's long, we only did two things in this question that were new. Everything else is assumed knowledge from before. Putting this through to each one, that's grade 9. This next step, where I just added like terms, bases are the same, this is grade 9. This step was just fraction work, this is grade 8. This step, just put in together, that's grade 8. This, what we did here, this was new where I decided to take the 27 and write it as 3 cubed so that the bases were the same. It's a little bit new. After that, everything in grade 8 and grade 9 stuff. Okay? That's, what, that's how pre-calculus moves forward. We introduce one new concept, and then we combine all the old concepts that you've learned from previous years into that question. So if there's stuff that you're not as strong on, then that comes through, right? And that's stuff that you need to work on. And the nice thing about grade 10 pre-calculus is it lets you practice the grade 9 and grade 8 stuff again. And we get to practice things over and over again. And what happens is you get really good at the stuff from before because you get lots of practice at it. Maybe. Okay, here are the answers. The first one, you would get this whole thing to the one-third and this whole thing to the one-fifth. We'd have 7x to the 9, y to the 12, 7x to the 10, y to the 5. When that one-third goes through, you get 7 to the one-third, x to the 3, y to the 4, times 7 to the one-fifth, x to the 2, y to the 1. Now, when you're adding things with the same bases, all of the variables have no fractions. The only thing that has fractions is the number in front. So we'd have 1 third plus 1 fifth. The x's, you'd have x to the 5, because you have 3 here, 2 there. And y's, you'd have y to the 5. Get a common denominator of 15, and you should have 7, 8 over 15, x to the 5, y to the 5 as our answer. How'd it go? Good? OK. 
Okay. No. Just one of them, not both together. Eventually, eventually you'll have, you'll be expected to know this for the, like for university. This is the level they'd expect at university. This is the last time you see it before university. Okay, so, well, you don't see this a lot going forward in grade 11, grade 12, but they do expect you to know how to manipulate things in university. Sometimes. Uh, let's just put that half through right away. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Sometimes when you push yourself to do, to prep, Half by half gives you one quarter. So now you would have, these ones are the same, so you'd have one half plus one third. The x's you'd have seven halves plus four thirds. And the y's you'd have one quarter plus two thirds. Get a common denominator and add them up. Did you get five sixths? X, did you get times three, 21 and eight? 29 over 6. Y, you're going to have to make this over 12. 3 and 8, 11 over 12. There you go. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, it's easier if the first one because they had numbers that were different in front. Take one if you'd like. You don't have to and pass it on. Let's go to the next question. Go back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's just a couple more questions. You already have the homework because it's the same homework from yesterday. No, this stuff isn't on the quiz tomorrow. No. What does evaluate mean as an instruction? To um, look to at, because that's what evaluate to check to it. Like Just to check it? Like you multiply that. In math, the word evaluate means write a final answer just as one number. I know, because so I can describe what? Means so with yeah. Right. Evaluate yourself. Yeah. In this one, it means write a single number as an answer. 9 to the power 2.5. So Mental math. Mental math question. 81 and then half of 81 is? No. Oh, yeah. Oh. No. no, no half no, of no. 9 is 2.5. Because how oh, are other? Wait, wait. Half of 9 times 5 times 3. Uh -huh. right. Maybe. And then you get the answer. No, here's what I want to do. 81, right? Okay. I like that. No, the answer isn't 90. What? Okay, got some good ideas here. That's very similar to what Alex said. Okay, yeah, you and Alex have the same ideas. So this is two different ideas you could put together. Some of you were using this idea, and another idea is as follows. So we could take the 2.5. If these were fractions, we could work with that. So one way to look at it is 2.5 is 5 divided by 2. 5 divided by 2, that's the same as 9 to the 1 half to the power of 5. 
And 9 to 1 half we know is the square root of 9. So it's equal to 3. And then you just have to multiply 3's. What's 3 times 3? Times 3. Times 3. Times 3. Good. 243. Now, what Alex and Natasha were saying is if you've got 9 to 2 and a half, isn't that the same as 9 squared times 9 to the half? Well, how do we, if we're multiplying, we add the exponents. So can you see that that's the same as 9 to the 2.5? Yeah. And this is 81, and this is 3. And 81 times 3 is also 243. Very nice. Hmm? Give a piece of candy. I don't have candy yet. I got to stock up for Friday. Thirty-two to the zero point four. Evaluate without a calculator. Thirty-two to the two-fifths. If you're having trouble changing 0.4 to a fraction, 0.4, this is your tenths, right? So you could think of it as four tenths, and that might help you get to two-fifths if you can't see two-fifths directly. Okay? What are you going to do with two-fifths? You should really get this on video. You, sh you, you do the thing with the fractions and the exponent thing, and, and then do it inside the thing inside. All right. Mix. With the thing. This will be the best instructional video ever. The 32 to the one thing and the over thing and thing it. And then this is equal to 2. 2 squared is 4. Hmm? How did I get the 2? 32 to the 1 fifth, you're looking for a fifth root. Fifth root of 32. Well, you're going to try some numbers, because I maybe you can't figure it out. Maybe you can. Because it says you can do it without a calculator, they're not going to ask you 1.7 times 1.7 times 1.7 times 1.7 times 1.7. So you try a number like 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, and then you get it. If 2 doesn't work, then you try 3. Usually people don't try 1, because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. And you already have this homework, so the last 10 minutes, you can either study for tomorrow's quiz or work on this.